When I first came to Canada, I spent hours and days in libraries, borrowing, choosing, reading the books, trying to improve my English. I like to read about people, about the hard work that brought them where they are. I remember a statement by uh, Oscar Wilde when I was reading once, and it says, quote, between men and women, there is no friendship possible. There is passion, there is love, there is worship, enmity, but there is no friendship, end of quote. What do you think of that? And what's my guest take on it right after this? The Via Mia Show is sponsored by the following people. Recording, rehearsal space, voiceovers, video editing in U.S. Minster. For more information, fiascobros.com. Cuts and colors in Uptown New Westminster. We welcome our stylist, George of Salon Caliente. For appointment, call 604-544-5104. Private investigations, security and alarm systems since 1972. For more information, call 604-251-2121. Makeup services for television, movie, and photo shoots. For more information, visit victoriawan.com. So just to follow up on what I started to talk about in, in intro, a relationship, I don't think that topic can ever be exhausted. And at this point, I'd like to give the space to my today's guest, and that is motivational speaker and relationship counselor, Jeffrey Armstrong. Welcome, Jeffrey, again. Thank you, Mia. It's, it's great so to nice be here to with have you again. Here. It's I always know. a pleasure. Oh, you, you all know all these routines and everything. Uh, See, well, we've never talked about what we're going to be talking about today. You, you uh, do a lot of speeches, you teach uh, kind of vast uh, spectrum of things that we should, world should be learning about. And today it's going to be uh, about relationship. When I talk to you what we can discuss today about you started making it or breaking it, it took me a while to understand what you're trying to say. It, that makes sense. I kind of like it. Mm. Um, seems like these days we're more breaking it than making it. It seems easier, doesn't it? Well, I don't know if it's easier, but why, why is it that? Mm. Well, the first thing, you know, Mia, is the world is held together by individuals. And so the work that I do is to help individuals become the most they can become. And as I did that work for many years, I began to see that relationship was one of the places of self-undoing, where human beings, I finally came to realize we had spent more time learning how to drive a car than how to be in a relationship. Well, that's true. So this shows you that this is an area where we can really end up hurting ourselves. Mm -hmm. You do um, a lot of speeches. You just recently returned from... Bali. Bali, yeah. I mm -hmm. saw those beautiful pictures. Um, um, you were teaching? I was. And one of the things I do is I teach, imagine that <clears throat> the ancient wisdom of the world is a kind of resource. Mm -hmm. And the modern world needs it to balance the powers of modern technology. Yeah. So I've specialized in all the ancient teachings that used to be mm -hmm. the wisdom of our planet. Yeah. And so in Bali, I was teaching that, teaching mm -hmm. people how to meditate, teaching people how to go within, teaching people how to establish peace and balance in their life. I think the Western world will need you more than Bali well, <laughs> to learn how to relax and meditate. It's right? needed in many places right I now. I believe that. No shortage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, more about uh, what Jeffrey does, um, we can find on his website. It's jeffreyarmstrong.com. And today we're talking about relationship. And um, what did you what did you think about that quotation I used in the intro about Oscar Wilde? Well, I thought it was very good for throwing down the glove. <laughs> throwing down the gauntlet, as they say. Well, of course, we all know that the battle of the sexes is one way to look at this gap that is 
between us by gender. And anciently, people asked the question, how can we keep the excitement of that difference? You know, the saying, viva la difference. Yeah. Yeah, so we want that difference to be there because through that difference, there's a kind of excitement that we can generate together. Mm -hmm. But we don't want to be so opposite that we can't be loving and kind and intimate with each other. Mm -hmm. So that's where the paradox is. That on the one hand, viva la difference, because it makes more excitement. Yes. On the other hand, we have to learn how to build a bridge mm -hmm. between us that holds our intimacy together and doesn't get broken apart because we have too much difference. Mm -hmm. Opposites attract, yes. but opposites also mm -hmm. cause harm to each other because we can't communicate. Well, when I was just thinking when I was listening to you, when two people um, meet and they think about there, there is something they have uh, going there, uh, do they have to have everything or anything in common? Well, the more they have in common, you might say the safer the relationship is. If you want a dangerous relationship, okay. just don't ask any questions. Yes. <laughs> but if you want a more cooperative relationship, it would probably be good for you to have quite a bit naturally in common. Mm -hmm. But we're not talking about interests, or are we? Well, not exactly interests, but who you really yes. are. Yes, now I understand. If you understand mm -hmm. who you really are, say, 75%. Yes. 25% mm -hmm. of you is a mystery. Yes. And if I say to you on a first date, so, tell me about yourself. Mm -hmm. And you say, well, I hate poetry, and I love this, and I don't like that, and I do like this, and this is my favorite food, and this is what I like. If you're fairly certain of who you are, Mm -hmm. And if I do the same thing, we'll know right away if we have a match or not. Yes, yes. If we're not honest, mm -hmm. then it's more difficult. Yeah. We'll say, well, well, how are you? And, but I'm keeping up my front mm -hmm. because I have some other motive in mind, so I'm not really telling you who I am. But that all, all already tells you who the person is. Well, it when does. You see, if you're, when you if see. you're sharp and you're really watching, mm -hmm. yeah. you know they're not being yeah. honest. Okay. The body language says everything. Anyway. It tells you. Right. So it doesn't matter what you're really saying, the body language will That's never right. lie. That's I why I, I yes. assumed a different posture, because <laughs> you knew. So just think that there is a rumor, in the saying you started with was about it, that you can't be friends and have great passion. They can't? That you cannot. Yes. That's what Oscar mm -hmm. Wilde yes. was saying. He was yeah. saying, yeah. you can be enemies, you can worship, mm -hmm. you can be at a distance, you can have these extreme emotions, but you can't also be friends. And that's where I disagree. Yeah, that, I really want you to know what you think of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I really am certain that friendship should happen at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And that if a relationship ever doesn't work and falls apart, you should go back to being friends. Friends, yes. So I would say, there's an old saying, friendship with privileges mm -hmm. and benefits, mm -hmm. you could say. So I would say not only friendship with benefits, but friendship that's so strong that you really like each other just because of who you are. Yeah. Not what I get from you or not just that thrill that you can give me. Mm -hmm. is it? Well, isn't this true that we don't have to like everything about a person in order to love that person, right? Well, that's an interesting question because we have to ask, what are we exactly loving? And this is where the ancient knowledge comes in their suggestion was that we see the consciousness in the person as a part of them that's timeless and immortal and beautiful, and that that consciousness goes from body to body. So in your last life, you could have been a man, and I could have been a woman. Yeah. So this means if I see you that way and you see me that way, you see, well, I see your vehicle is female and yours is male, but inside there I see a consciousness that might have had a hundred lifetimes switching back and forth between male and female, so we're kind of playing a game. Mm -hmm. And since it's a game, it can still be fun, but it doesn't have to be so serious that we go to war. Yeah. yeah? Mm -hmm. So that's the place where we buy a little bit of leverage, and a little space that protects us from ultimately having to go to war over being different. Mm -hmm. We also talked, before we sat down, very briefly about communication. It's my favorite topic. Hmm. Um, 
is is the relationship worth of anything if the, the co communication is lacking? It's pretty difficult to maintain any kind of tension without communication. Mm -hmm. um, there's a great practice that the Pacific Mel um, Melanesian, Polynesian people used to do. If two people thought they wanted to get married, they would put them on a desert island with a two-week supply of food and one blanket. Mm -hmm. And they would come back in two weeks. And if they still wanted to get married, mm -hmm. they could get married. <laughs> <laughs> there was little like else to do. <laughs> so if you can't communicate, mm -hmm. and you only have one blanket, you see. You see, but uh, I know that that's that's the problem in these uh, these relationship these days yeah. that um, they can't solve anything because there's at least one person is missing that ability to to communicate. At least one person missing in each person. <laughs> yeah. Well, or, or that way, yeah. Well, we also know now by research and scientific study that testosterone, the primary hormone for masculinity, and estrogen, the primary hormone for femininity, mm -hmm. speak a different language. They speak out of the different hemisphere of the brain. And we should think, in my opinion, that when we come together with our opposite, we've come to learn their language, it would even be good if we had some training in it. Mm -hmm. So men should learn to speak female, and okay. females should learn to speak male before they spend a long period of time with a male or a female. It's a lifetime to learn who I am myself, to learn about others. I need like, we need like three lives. But well, uh, I think that empathy really helps if we possess that, right? Well, and empathy is a good example of a female quality that comes from estrogen. Mm -hmm. Empathy is the ability M is am, and M means in English to love. Okay. So to love the person first and be critical next mm -hmm. is estrogenic thinking, mm -hmm. or it's the heart-based thought. And testosterone thinking, logical left brain thinking is, what did you just say to me logically? And this is why when a woman goes to share something with a man, if he's not careful, he'll try to solve the problem as if she was asking him to fix something, because testosterone, like, testosterone likes to fix things. So to a man with a hammer, everything looks like a nail. So <laughs> if you start sharing with me, and you're thinking, I just want to share my feelings, and I start telling you what to do, then you'll get angry and say, I wasn't, I'm not stupid, I know how to fix my life. And then I'll say, I didn't say you were stupid. And you'll say, yes, you did, because you weren't listening. Mm -hmm. And I say, yes, I was trying to listen. Yeah, and there you go. Yeah, that's the part of communication. Mm -hmm. So if, if I, as the man, was listening and going, really? Wow. Mm -hmm. Ooh, boy, I can feel that. Hmm, <laughs> interesting. Thanks for sharing. Mm -hmm. You'd feel much more happy with the conversation yeah. than if I misunderstood you. So we could take training in this. People could learn this before the they have relationships. The listening is the, the problem in What's a lot that? of people. <laughs> Hearing is one thing. Yeah. We'll hear the voice. Yes. But the listening is sometimes lacking, mm -hmm. and then it starts there, and it goes goes deeper and deeper. It does. But we will carry on. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be back with Jeffrey Armstrong. The VMEA Show is sponsored by the following people. Recording, rehearsal space, voiceovers, video editing in New Westminster. For more information, fiascobros.com. Cuts and colors in Uptown New Westminster. We welcome our stylist, George of Salon Caliente. For appointment, call 604-544-5104. Private investigations, security, and alarm systems since 1972. For more information, call 604-251-2121. Makeup services for television, movie, and photo shoots. For more information, visit victoriawan.com. So we are back with Jeffrey Armstrong, motivational speaker and relationship counselor. Uh, Jeffrey, I know that you travel a lot. You see the differences in different cultures, uh, issues in relationship. How do they vary 
uh, do people on the East, because we, we are learning so much from the East part of the world, do they have same or similar issues in relationship like the Western world? You know, they do vary very much from culture to culture. But I just learned a secret from Bali I think I'll share with you and our viewers because it's a wonderful secret for relationship. I like to hear that. Mm, we were staying in Bali. Bali is a very interesting culture because it's sort of still rooted in its ancient self mm -hmm. and hasn't been so completely disconnected from its past. So when you go there, you can feel their connection to nature and you probably stay in a hotel, as we did, a um, lovely hotel um, called the Bali Mansion Hotel, in our case, with a large staff of young people, 20s, 30s, and then some older people that are managing at a higher level. And one of the things we notice is we make friends very quickly with the hotel staff, and they're always smiling. I mean always. And I mean show your teeth smiling. Really, really smiling. And that's, that's a sincere smile. It's a very sincere smile. Yep. And so at one point I asked them, I said, <clears throat> please tell me, why are you smiling all the time? <laughs> and they said, well, in our culture, we believe that if you frown at someone, mm -hmm. you give them a demon. Ooh. And if you smile at someone, you give them a divine. So they are trying to give. They are not waiting to receive anything. Well, not only that, they know that they are a, a kind of conduit through which a negative emotion is going to be contagious. It's going to yeah. be caught by the other mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Should, yeah, of course. Yeah. Or they're going to go, Yeah. and the other person is going to catch the smile and go. But that happens here, right? You walk in the street, you walk into the store, you have... Something in your mind, you think positive, you smile, and you look at people, they smile back. It's contagious. Yeah. So they're aware culturally, mm -hmm. not just accidentally. It's their cultural viewpoint that it's every person's responsibility, even with strangers, to give them smiles rather than frowns. So mm -hmm. what more than if you live with someone all the time, wouldn't it be your responsibility to give them a lot of smiles and a lot of hugs? and a lot of appreciation, and a lot of I love yous. What about the other one is not a good receiver? Well. I mean, a wrong relationship, If we don't right? have a good sender and receiver, <laughs> this show will not reach everyone. <laughs> so I would say this is part of the skills training mm -hmm. that we have to think, if I brought this person into my life to be special, then I have to learn how to treat them special. Mm -hmm. Even if I'm not feeling it, I have to do it, yeah. and then I'll feel it. Yes. We have, we have to give before we get, right? It doesn't I, make sense. It, it helps us to yeah. overcome any gaps. Mm -hmm. And so uh, my experience with people over many years is that what happens is life stress gets contagious. It gets inside their circle, and they start acting out their life stress with each other inside their relationship circle. Mm -hmm. And now it's no longer fun. Yeah. And the fun that they used to have together is gone because they can't play, they can't laugh, mm -hmm. they don't smile enough, they don't hug enough. Yeah, that's very interesting. Thank you very much for sharing the secret. Mm -hmm. I really like that. It's Isn't so, it? when you say it, it seems, uh, makes sense. That yeah. Why wouldn't I know that before, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Oh. Well, it's the same way. It's a, such a simple, almost childlike thing, but maybe we become too adult. Maybe we forget mm -hmm. to be childlike yeah. in our love. You know? I've heard this before. Why are you not smiling? Why don't you smile? And the response was, did you say anything funny? Like they don't understand why I should be smiling. Yes. <laughs> well, that was funny in itself. That's a no, good joke. No. You mean no, I didn't it tell a good joke? It wasn't a joke. I, it was, I was there when <clears throat> I heard that conversation. Well, I think it also, you should wake up in the morning and look over just as a practice. Mm -hmm. If somebody's daring enough to s sleep with you, mm -hmm. you should wake up in the morning, look across the pillow and say, I'm so lucky to be here with you. <laughs> I'm trouble to wake up. That should Come be on. the first thing you say, not, oh, you again. <laughs> you know. so oh, that's I, funny. It requires some skill mm -hmm. and maybe some attention to the fact that someone has taken the trouble to be with us all the time. That's not easy. You know what I'm noticing? Like, like a lot of people um, 
are really literally complaining about the relationship, mm -hmm. you know, one about after another. It's not good, not really complaining about the um, uh, the partner, but about the relationship as it is. It's not working. This is not going on. This is not. And I'm, I, you know, I'm tired of this. I have to go to see somebody. Or I, I've heard that one side is keep trying, really work hard, if things that can be fixable, but the other part is not there. So what's the contribution of male, female in, into the relationship? Is there equal? Do we have some divided roles? Well, there's different views on this, but mm, my wider study of world culture says that there is a responsibility of the male energy to love the complexity of the female energy and not say that it's a problem. Mm -hmm. This is a very important thing. They teach about this in the culture of India and all throughout the Orient, that the female is designed in a more complex way because after all, she makes babies, she is, her whole system is made to be the source of life. So the man is supposed to think that I need to learn to understand the complexity of the feminine, not complain that she's complicated. Yes. Okay? Yeah. Now, the female shouldn't take advantage of this and say, yes, I get to be complicated. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it's your problem. Alpha. <laughs> yeah, not so fair. <laughs> but let's just say that chivalry, that the man's job is not to complain that the female energy is something he doesn't understand, mm -hmm. but to say to her, I want to understand, want to know you better, and I appreciate every part of you. Mm -hmm. then that opens the door for the female to say, well, then I'll teach you about me because you appreciate. Mm -hmm. And then it becomes the woman's job to teach the man the things he doesn't know, not to expect him to know them automatically because that's probably not fair yeah, because no. the female is a little more complicated mm -hmm. in the way she's made. Yeah. Not intrinsically, not as a problem, but as her beauty, let's just say, you ever heard of the nine faces of Eve? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this means that every woman has nine distinct personalities mm -hmm. that she switches back and forth from. Little girl, okay. sexy lady, wise woman, mother, okay. so on. Truth teller. So she has these different personalities. Mm -hmm. And a man is supposed to be smart enough to know when she switches mm -hmm. to pay attention. Okay. And he's supposed to be willing to learn so she'll help him. She'll say, I'm the girl right now. Don't try to take me to the bedroom when I'm the girl. Mm -hmm. Hold me and, and protect me when I'm the girl. I'll tell you when to take me to the bedroom. And right now I'm your mother. And listen up. <laughs> you need to clean the house. And how many men notice these faces? Uh, the ones I've been teaching. <laughs> so why don't, why don't we the join? The ones with a good mother. The yes. ones with a good mother know it. Why don't we jo join Jeffrey, at least for now online, uh, jeffreyarmstrong.com. Because I know that you do teach locally as well. You don't only travel. So yeah. we can find, I'm sure, the dates and all the information is mm -hmm. on your website. Um, there's one part that... I noticed that it's, it's kind of it's lacking in relationships, and it's a it's trust. Um, not all of them, but that it's been issues a lot of lot of relationships. So now, if one get hurts, that can leave pretty significant trace. Does it have to remain? You know, Mia, that's perhaps one of the most important questions in a relationship. Is there's two parts to it. One. My recommendation to people is do not talk about your primary partner with other people. Of course, yeah. Because it takes away from the intimacy and the trust. So if you're going to have someone else to talk to, have an agreed upon counselor that you go talk to mm -hmm. so it's confidential. Because mm -hmm. otherwise your relationship starts to be the hairdresser knows and this person no. knows and that person sure. knows. Mm -hmm. and. It's hard to trust when there's a team of 20 people working <laughs> on your relationship and you don't know 19 of them. And you're hearing the feedback from everybody else. From Different everyone. one. Yeah. Not so useful. Yeah. So that hurts trust. Yes. So the couple has to believe in trust and make it be a part of the relationship and they have to make a boundary. Mm -hmm. The next thing is we have to learn how to erase hurts quickly and not hold on to them for a very long period of time. Well, they say that we shouldn't be digging or living in the past, but, but mm. past predicts future. 
Well, sometimes, but sometimes remembering the past relentlessly prevents the future from happening. Okay, yeah. There's two sides. Mm -hmm. So yes, the statistical part is maybe it'll happen again. Mm -hmm. But if I don't allow that to go away, then what happens is the person I'm closest to has less yes. and less hope of Chances growing in the future. Chances to succeed with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because yeah. now we're holding on to the past them. Mm -hmm. Some people talk about what happened 20 years ago. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. A lot of people decide to remain and live uh, and remain in toxic relationship because, because of what? Fear. Really? Partly. Fear to leave or well, to be alone or to try something it's, else? It's or? probably all the above. Yeah. Uh, fear is pretty widespread. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to go back to this erasing because... I think it's because they have a hopelessness that they'll be any better at relationship wherever they go. Mm -hmm. And they may be right. Yeah. So people probably stay in toxic relationships because they believe that the toxicity is in them and they would take it with them. Oh. So a hmm. simple answer to this is to get training. We do get more training to drive a car than we do to be in relationship. Mm -hmm. This is so interesting, Jeffrey. I wish I can have another two hours to sit down with you and talk. We can. I could like like to learn. This should be a teaser, actually. Uh, you, we can. You can meet Jeffrey. Um, you can hear what he's saying. Um, can get sometimes complex, but it's very challenging to listen to this. JeffreyArmstrong.com. I like to thank you very much, Jeffrey. You know this routine so well. This is seventh cup. Do you know that? Uh, to sign, please. Did of course. You, you already signed two, first and third. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen you for two years. Can um, I sign my whole name? This is the only way. Okay. Thank you again for watching us today via Mia, and I will see you again next time. Bye-bye.